today. But it depends on the ability of the person to, uh, to take it. Now, Andrew Thrash told me this morning that uh, he and I were discussing some herbs and uh, he told me that turmeric will contract the gallbladder. I didn't know that before this morning, so I'll pass that on to you. He says it's rare that it will, that it will work that way and it's rare that even if it does work that way, it will cause any problem. But if a, if a person has small gallstones and you give something that will cause a contraction of the gallbladder, they might push one of those gallstones into one of the bile ducts and that might cause an acute hospitalization, which you would not be very happy for. So uh, you might inquire for an adult if they have known gallstones and if so, if they are small. The large ones won't be dislodged by uh, the turmeric. You can see the turmeric root here and the powder. Uh, that's what it looks like. And you should try to keep it fresh. Although even after many years of being stored, the dry powder does still have some uh, good benefits. A lemon uh, squeezed and diluted with a glass of water and taken with meals will also bring good results in asthma. Now how much is a glass of water? Is it eight ounces? Well, not for a small child. They won't be able to take that much. You can make it that way, but don't expect that the child will be drinking all of it. Just give us a child's size glass and uh, that, will be, that will work for them. It doesn't have to be the entire lemon. And uh, if you're the mama, you can drink the rest because it has a slightly sedative effect as well, uh, but it also boosts the spirits a bit. And uh, so if you're having to deal with the child, it might be nice. Now the next uh, good thing for asthma that I have here is figs. If you are fortunate enough to have a fig tree and it's fig season, which is around June or July, then uh, you can uh, pick some figs and eat them fresh. And the fresh figs are also very good. But if you don't have that, then get uh, two to five dried figs and wash them a little and soak them overnight in water and then drink the uh, water the next morning. The person with the asthma drinks the water. Now the next thing is the roots of bitter gourd. Uh, here is the, uh, the fruit of the bitter gourd here. And the roots, the bitter gourd itself is helpful, but the root is even better. And it has been used since, modern since ancient times in the treatment of asthma, and we may very uh, uh, freely do that as well. Um, bitter gourd is, uh, it does live up to its name of being bitter, so you're not apt to overdose with it. You can mix that with a little bit of honey and the juice of ho holy basil leaves, and it's a very good uh, mixture for asthma. Now, a teaspoonful of fresh ginger puree made from a half an inch of the root, blenderized with a cup of fenugreek decoction, or tea, and a little honey. It acts as an expectorant, very good at that, and so uh, the same kind of thing that you get with the garlic you can get with this as well. It also has good anti-inflammatory properties and you'll find that very useful in asthma. Fenugreek can be made by mixing a tablespoonful of ground fenugreek seeds in a cup full of water. It doesn't taste bad. It smells, uh, has a nice aroma. Um, mm, I'll take that back that it doesn't taste bad. You'll probably want to put a little honey with it. Just a little to uh, make it so that you can or you can put some licorice root. Licorice root has another good benefit, and that is that it has a cortisone-like uh, effect, somewhat like hydrocortisone. You can take this remedy of the fenugreek and, uh, the, uh, uh, and the, the little bit of honey, you can take that two times a day. Now steaming ginger tea, as we mentioned before, with two minced garlic cloves that can help you to keep asthma under control. They can take a cup of that in the morning and a cup in the, in the evening. And for a child, it's a child-sized cup. 
Don't give a, a, a small child an adult size cup and expect that they can drink it all. They won't be able to. Now some things to prevent the acute flare-ups. One thing is the patient should follow all the laws of nature. We forget these with chronic illness and we often have them inside far too much. We need to get them out of doors, into the sunshine, into the fresh air, into the negative air ions so that they can get all these benefits of nature. They have great healing properties. Regular fasting once a week. Would you do that for a child? It depends. You may have a limited fast for a child. Let's say something like a fruit fast. And if the child can understand and cooperate with you, then uh, that's, that's fine. You may do the remedy of fasting. If they don't understand and they, they, and they feel they're being abused, I wouldn't uh, fast a child. I'd just uh, uh, let them eat a regular diet. Very simple. And during the time that you're treating an acute flare-up of a child with asthma, put the whole family, if you can, on the same diet. So they won't have to sit at the same table where others are eating things they might consider to be a treat. Occasionally, an enema for a child. There's an enema syringe, a bulb syringe, which you can use for an enema for a child. Um, usually, a child under the age of 10 should not have more than eight ounces of enema water and never repeat an enema, but never in a child. You can overload the child with water, especially if they don't uh, expel the enema water, and uh, that can cause low sodium, which can be life-threatening for the child. Here is another good remedy for asthma. <coughs> that is uh, good posture. You can see there a person standing well, and uh, sitting well is also good, and if you're not doing that right now, you <laughs> should sit up straight now. <laughs> And if you are standing, you should stand up straight right now. Uh, we tend to breathe better if we have good posture. We need good sitting posture, good lying posture, good walking posture, good standing posture. We need to always be thinking about good posture. It uh, is uh, a biblical principle for us to stand upright. God made us that way. Now there is a breathing exercise that you can do. Breathe in to the count of four, hold it to the count of seven, and breathe out to the count of nine. So let's uh, do that all together. Would you like to do that now? Okay, breathe in, one, two, three, four, hold it, one, two, three, four. The air is getting warm, getting moistened. Breathe out, one, two, three, four. You're slowly breathing out so that you can moisten and warm the passages. Okay, that's nine. Then you start right in again with one, two, three, four, and hold it again to warm and moisten the air. Then it is expelled, and uh, uh, if anyone is having trouble staying awake right after lunch, that will also help you to stay awake. So <laughs> while you sit uh, struggling with the natural drowsiness after a meal, and in the afternoon, whether or not there is a meal, uh, this deep breathing exercise can help you a lot with that. If you need to, occasionally you can take a catch-up breath. For a child, you simply count a little faster. Also, you can breathe through a pinpoint in the fist, make a fist like this, and then leave a little pinpoint there with your uh, forefinger and breathe through and it must be uh, forceful enough that it makes the makes your cheeks puff out and your face turn a little red and the veins stand up on your neck uh, in order for it to uh, overcome the contraction of the smooth muscle in the bronchi. You can also practice saying P at, at when you're walking, yeah, when you take a breath, it's 
that must be done forcefully also. So let me, so that I won't feel ridiculous.